Hi, welcome to another episode of Tom Talks About. I'm Tom, and today I'm here to talk about Biden. No, not the politician, the watch company. No, really, the watch company. Let's have a look at a couple of the watches. Here we have the face of the automatic watch. That's the mechanical self-winding watch. As you can see, the face is highly figured and depicts two dragons. Here we have the face of the quartz watch. As you can see, it depicts one dragon holding a pearl. And it's in a great deal of color. It's in substantial relief. This is the lower strap of the automatic watch, which you can see is gray and is also highly detailed. It's rubber and it's fairly comfortable to wear. And this is the corresponding strap of the quartz watch. It's black, but it's also comfortable to wear. Here is the upper strap of the automatic watch and the upper strap of the quartz watch. Again, the face of the automatic watch and the quartz watch. I have written down a couple of the measurements for comparison purposes. While the two watches look identical, they're actually slightly different sizes. Regarding the automatic watch, first I measured the lug width. That's this distance here, the width of the strap at the point that it enters the watch. On the automatic watch, that's 20.6 millimeters. On the quartz watch, that's 20.5 millimeters, which is 0.1 millimeters difference. In practice, with either one, if you ever want to replace the rubber strap, it would be a 20 millimeter strap. But they are, however, slightly different. Um, the, the next measurement is the, is the case. And I measured that from here to here, across the case at its maximum width, not including the knob. On the automatic watch, that's 45.5 millimeters. On the quartz watch, that's 46.7 millimeters. That's slightly larger by 1.2 millimeters. That's unusual because generally a quartz watch is smaller than an automatic watch. Uh, the next thing that I measured is the thickness of the case. Um, on the automatic watch, that's 10.5 millimeters. On the quartz watch, that's 9.4 millimeters. That's the sensible measurement because I would expect it to be smaller on a quartz watch. Then comes the weight of the watches. These are pretty heavy watches. The automatic watch weighs 147.1 grams. The quartz watch weighs 133.4 grams, which is 13.7 grams less, but that's still a heck of a lot more heavy than your average quartz watch. Um, the next measurement is the lug to lug measurement. That's this distance here. On the automatic watch, that's 55.8 millimeters. On the quartz watch, that's 55.4 millimeters, 0 0.4 millimeters shorter. This is only kind of unusual in that the two look pretty much identical, and you would think that, no, they would probably use the exact same metal case, but they didn't. They both feel pretty much the same to wear. They're both comfortable. They are, however, kind of heavy, as I mentioned, so you will notice after a while that you do feel the weight of them. 
they're relatively inexpensive watches. I dare say they're cheap. This is good in that, frankly, I will not buy a quartz watch that's expensive. On the other hand, I do know that this often means that they're not particularly designed to last forever. Um, an automatic watch, the lifespan, you're kind of expected to last about 10 years before it needs to be serviced, which is to say taken apart and oiled and lubricated. Uh, with, a, with an inexpensive automatic watch, you kind of expect that uh, it's probably not cost effective to have it serviced because this watch cost me about $30 and having it serviced would probably cost me a couple hundred. So I'm probably not going to end up having it serviced when the time comes. With a quartz watch, you expect the battery to last five to ten years and then you have to replace the battery. I'm not really sure how the, the back of this watch comes off. Uh, there is nothing really obvious about it to indicate how it's removed. This makes it a little difficult to say whether I will or will not be able to change the battery when the time comes. The automatic watch, on the other hand, has what's called a display back. That means that you can see the, the actual movement of the watch through the back of the watch. I'm also not entirely sure how this particular display back is removed. There's usually a way. I don't know exactly what it is. I don't see anything really obvious. Generally, in the metal around the back, you would see some divots that are designed to, to grasp with a tool so that you can open the back by unscrewing it. However, these are not present on this particular watch. So I'm really not sure how it can be opened to service it, but there's probably a way. I am including purchase links for both watches below if you're interested in buying them.